I'm starting with a photograph that I want you to look at for just a minute. This is a picture of an older man with a woman sitting on his lap. And he is apparently not quite sure what's going on. Maybe a little bum-fuzzled. Maybe a little discomfited. Uh, there's some real questions here about what is going on. Uh, more questions than we can answer. Who is this woman? What is the occasion? Who determined it would be fun for her to sit on Grandpa's lap? Um, whatever our answer. Uh, is she a grandchild or a, an actress or whatever else? Whatever the part, this is one beautiful woman. And focusing on a sequence of three photographs, starting with the one that I've shown you, I began thinking about the story of King David, the last weeks or days of King David, as depicted in the last chapters of First Chronicles and uh, uh, Second Samuel uh, and First Kings in the Bible. Uh, during which time David uh, uh, addressed um, some wrongs that had been committed, passed, made arrangements to pass the kingdom to David, and arrangements for building the temple. And it would be also consistent of the narrative that we read to think of him thinking back over the chapters of his life, his battles and victories, and in the meantime, as death approached, however, he grew more and more feeble, and could not keep warm. So his servants, his servants decided in terms of the standards of that time that perhaps if they brought in a beautiful woman to take care of him, that they could generate some warmth. There's a great cartoon by Booth that illustrates a similar story. She seems to have, this woman uh, by the name of Abishag, seems to have provided some tender loving care. But the historian's claim is unequivocal he did not cohabit with her. Now those are the facts. But it is also true that we do not have a record of what David thought about during those last hours of his life. So let us look a little further at the story depicted in the photographs that we have. This is the second of a sequence of three photos depicting a beautiful woman on an old man's lap. And now he is perhaps a little more involvement, the beginning of a smile, uh, perhaps. And then we get to the third photograph in which the smile is clear and his hand is on her thigh. To my mind, his changing response to the beauty on his lap, this old man's lap, uh, his changing countenance and the location of his hand suggests the possibility of a different kind of conclusion to David's narrative and maybe a reflection upon uh, the last stages of life and some of the joys that we have throughout life. I've reflected this for David in a poem entitled The Last Thing to Go, which says, for boxers, the last thing to go is the punch. The reflexes are first, a step or so is next. At some point, endurance becomes an end in and of itself. And all the while, Memory preserves the recall of battles won, victories claim, and other times defined by joy. Yet all too often aging better preserves the sense of things lost, not those retained, even while the best things remain, the gift and promise David might have seen in Abishag. My understanding of that promise came in a very personal experience described in the poem that follows, and in fact the first version that I entitled 
a poem called The Last Thing to Go. It starts the same way as the one we've already read. It says this, The reflexes go first, and step or so is next. At some point, endurance becomes an end itself. For boxers, the last thing to go is the punch. For men in general, this is where we've changed now, it is a different kind of thing. The kind I saw in Dad's hospital room, three months comatose, no sense of him, or so all agreed, until he beamed his delight with the entry of a new and gorgeous nurse. <laughs>